Mr. Chancellor, it is my honour to present to you Dr. Rejma Shetty to recognise her role in advancing synthetic biology. In a Boston area apartment back in 2008, Rejma Shetty, three of her fellow biologi biological engineering PhD students and their graduate supervisor at MIT had the foresight and ambition to found a microorganism design company, Ginkgo BioWorks. Since then, Ginkgo has been at the forefront of the fast-growing field of synthetic biology, helping its partners build organisms that lead to more efficient and sustainable goods in fields ranging from health and agriculture to cosmetics and consumer goods. In 2018, Ginkgo became the first synthetic biology startup to receive unicorn status as a private company valued at over 1 billion USD. Dr. Shetty and her Ginkgo co-founders helped launch the International Genetic Engineering Machine, or iGEM. The nonprofit is dedicated to advancing synthetic biology and runs the iGEM competition, which gives students including an award-winning team from Concordia University, the chance to push the boundaries of synthetic biology. Dr. Shetty has already received several awards and honors for her achievements. In 2022, Forbes magazine ranked her among the 100 most successful U.S. women entrepreneurs, executives, and entertainers. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Board of Governors and Senate, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Dr. Rejma Shetty, so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Shetty, and we look forward to your address to the convocation. Thank you. Bonjour, uh, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family and friends. Let me start by extending my congratulations to all the graduates today. Please do take a moment to savor the occasion and appreciate how far you've come the last few years. I'd also like to thank all the families and loved ones of the graduates here today. You are the unsung heroes of today. You provided the support and love without which this day might not have been possible for the graduates. I'd like to take these few minutes I have to share two stories with all of you. The first story is about working on problems that matter to you. I co-founded a biotechnology company, Ginkgo Bioworks. Today, Ginkgo is a few billion dollar publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. But I'll confess that I never aspired to be a founder and start a company. I showed up at my university where I was fortunate enough to meet my professor and now co-founder, Tom Knight. Tom introduced me to this crazy idea that you could program a cell, the unit of life, the way you might program a computer. Just like if you rewrite the zeros and ones of a computer program, you can change what a computer does. If you rewrite the A's, T's, G's, and C's of a cell, you can change what a cell does. And Tom taught me this idea that biology is programmable. So why should you care? Well, you just have to look around you to realize that biology touches every part of our lives. It's our food, it's our health, it's our environment. So if we can figure out how to program biology, we can grow food more sustainably, we can create vaccines and therapeutics to protect us from a global pandemic, we can clean up and protect our environment. But as I learned firsthand as a student, programming biology is really hard. I spent years trying to write even simple cell programs, and they would barely work as intended. So it was then as a student that I decided that I wanted to figure out how to make it easier to engineer biology so that we could use biology not to solve any one problem alone, but to solve many different problems spanning food, health, and the environment. 
And what I found was that even at a place as special as MIT, where I was a student, it was really hard to work on this problem of making biology easier to engineer. And that's because universities do the incredibly important work of discovering something new or building something new. But making the engineering of biology faster, cheaper, or easier wasn't just, just wasn't something that was celebrated in a university. It wasn't doing something new. So I decided to start a company, not because being a founder was cool, but because I felt that a startup was the best way to work on the problem that mattered to me. And I knew that regardless of what happened with Ginkgo, because let's face it, most startups fail, <laughs> I wouldn't regret taking a swing at a problem that mattered to me. Lots of people will tell you that your choices are to be a scientist or a doctor or a lawyer, to work in academia or industry or finance, but that's not the choice that matters. The choice that matters is picking a problem in the world that matters to you and figuring out the best way to help solve it. The second story is about optimizing locally, not globally. When I look back at some of the most pivotal choices in my life that led me to where I am today, I'm struck by how little forethought and planning went into those choices. I chose to join a biology research lab as a high school student because the lab studied venomous marine snails, which sounded kind of neat. I chose to study computer science at university because I found biology classes a bit boring, honestly. <laughs> um, I chose to work on programming cells because I thought it would be pretty cool if we could program cells the way we program a computer. Not one of those choices were made in the hopes of becoming a co-founder of a, of a biotechnology company. Instead, any time I, I was faced with the choice of what to do, I chose the path that seemed the most interesting to me at the time. For all of us, life is a series of choices. You've already made some, where to go to school and what to study, but you're gonna make many more in the future. Where to work, what to do, with whom to spend your time. Sometimes I meet people who choose to study topics they're not interested in, take jobs they don't care about, or spend long periods of time on stuff they don't enjoy because they see it as a stepping stone to an imagined future for themselves. But in my experience, if you're fortunate enough to have choices, as many of you do, choosing the path you enjoy is more likely to open the aperture of opportunity and lead you to places you've never dreamed. So instead of making choices on, base on where you want to be 10 years from now or 20 years from now, make choices on how you want to spend your time today. Your life energy is the most precious thing you have. Use it wisely. Work on problems that matter to you and optimize locally, not globally, by choosing the paths that give you joy today. Thank you, and good luck. Dr. Shetty, I want to thank you for motivating all of us and for inspiring those of our graduates who are soon going to be in a position to make broad career choices. I thank you very much and I think you've left us all with a, um, a goal in life to be as successful as you have been.